Hello everybody, today I'm going to introduce the latest iteration of my digital soy moisture sensor, which can be directly connected to the Raspberry Pi. Later I will explain what has been improved and um, the way to connect it to the Raspberry Pi with the software library that I made or how you can integrate with the IDOMSYS4 irrigation system. Just a few words about me and my project. I'm the developer of the open source IDOSYS4 software, which is based on the Raspberry Pi and provides irrigation control and environment control. This software is dedicated to the farmers and gardeners. But now let's go to, to see the sensor. First of all, I improved the form factor of the electronic part, so it's smaller. Then I work a lot on the stability of the reading, so I added a voltage control system. So I tested for several weeks now and uh, as expected the stability improved. I also added some uh, temperature compensation, also the dynamic range is higher now. But I would say the biggest point that differentiates this uh, sensor from other sensors that are already available in the market is that this sensor uses a digital interface which is not the I2C interface. Many other sensors they use the I2C interface which has a big issue. It cannot have a long cable. This may be a problem if you want to use your uh, SolarMOSIS sensors because one meter length is definitely not enough for many applications. Then, with this digital interface that uh, I created for this sensor, it's possible to connect a uh, longer cable. Uh, so far I tested with uh, up to 6 meter cable and it has no issues. Uh, honestly, I don't know which is the upper limit. But it's safe to say that uh, it can work up to 6 meter cable lengths. I had two versions of this sensor, the one like this, that is the naked sensor. So the electronic is exposed. If you want to use it, you have to find a way to cover the electronic to protect it from the water. And then there is another version, this one, which has the protection for the electronics and it also has a cable. As anticipated, these uh, sensors can be directly connected to the Raspberry Pi. And uh, there is a library in Python. I would say it's a module just one file, you can download it and uh, with this you can integrate it to your uh, project. We can see that it has three connections. One is the VCC, data and ground. VCC is 5 volts and data goes to one of the GPIO pin of the Raspberry. In the next part of the video I will show how to make a very quick setup of this uh, sensor, integrate it with the Python or with the IDOSYS4. Here I connected the sensor to the GPIO 21 of the Raspberry and that's it from the connection point of view. Now let's go to see the setup. As I said, this sensor can be integrated with the IDOSYS4 software and can also be integrated with Python project. In fact, there is a module available to interface this sensor. You can go to my TD page. I will put the link in the description of this video. And uh, you can see that there is a Python script link And here you can download this file that is slowwire.ey and you can use this file just to read directly the sensor. This is the Raspberry uh, interface. I already downloaded the, the file. Typing this command Python 3 slowwire and 21 is the GPIO. If we execute this command, you can see that there is a reading from the sensor. In this case, it's 76. So, with this module, you can integrate 
the sensor in your uh, Python project. As alternative, there is also the iDosis 4 software that can be integrated with this uh, sensor. It is very simple, no programming involved, you just go to Ado setting and you define the sensor. So in this case we go to Ado setting, in table, let's add input name, let's call it uh, hoisted sensor, then let's put some parameter, level up to sensor, and then choose the slow wire protocol to communicate with it, and the pin to 21, as it's connected to GPIO 21. Just we want to the system to periodically read the sensor every one minute, for example. Then we save, we add the row, and we confirm the configuration. So we can go to see if it is working. So we go to setting, and we have moisture sensor one here read 76 so you can see it's reading it if i put the finger over the sensor yeah you would see that the uh, reading change the adosis 4 is a complete uh, software for the irrigation so you can use this sensor to control the activation of the irrigation. So if there is not enough water, it will activate. If there is too much water, it will not activate. If you go to auto bordering, you will see that even if we connected the sensor, then there is, a, there is no sensor available. In this, this is due to the fact that we have also to enable the sensor for water control. So this is the role of the sensor and here in the use for we put water control. Once we do that, we save, we can go to auto watering and now we are able to see the sensor here. There is another video where I explain how to calibrate the sensor and how to set up the other watering for your purposes and uh, I will uh, also put the link of this video in the description I think that's it for now I'm working on another project with this sensor where I connect it to the Wi-Fi and uh, it is powered by a small solar panel and battery in this way, it will be possible to put this sensor in your garden without any wire. I will release a video about it. Okay, I hope you find this video useful and uh, thank you for watching.